My name's Holly. Um, a little bit like what Lucy's just done, I'm going to kind of give you an overview of several works and then I'm going to finish with a short video piece. I just want to also say a massive thank you to Melanie and the team for inviting me and for creating this space for all of us, which I think is really invaluable, um, for talking about things that aren't often spoken about. Um, and actually, really, that's the subject of what I uh, want to say about these works I'm going to present. Um, it's about developing a language for a lived experience that's very difficult to articulate. Um, it's not often discussed, and it's hard to find a vocabulary for. And so I'm going to show um, a selection of works relating to that from the last eight years, approximately. Um, and hopefully they're works that kind of invite a dialogue about um, this experience and, and similar experiences. Um, and for me, I really hold that intention with um, a desire for the artworks to kind of be good artworks in and of themselves and not only about kind of eliciting a response that's like sympathy or empathy um, that, that hopefully they kind of operate in, on another level as well and there's also a tension that's about making yourself vulnerable um, by sharing the experiences but also kind of knowing like for me I really appreciate that I have this um, way of dealing with things that I've experienced and I know that if I didn't have this outlet it, the whole uh, situation would be a lot harder to process. So that's the kind of context that I'm coming from, I suppose. Um, so the first work that I want to show is actually, uh, it was made before I realised that I couldn't have children, and um, it's a work called Collapsing Deities. I made a lot of different iterations of it. This iteration was at Spike Island in Bristol. Um, the format of the performance is that I come into the space with like an Ikea bag full of props and costumes, and I dress up as lots of different characters from kind of uh, Judeo-Christian and Greco-Roman tradition, so different deities and saints. And I guess at this point, I already had a, an interest in depicting things that are difficult to visualise, like they don't exist or they're invisible if they do exist. Um, and I was also thinking about archetypal characters. So the form of the performances, I dress up as all these things one at a time and then I make hybrids. And obviously one of the key archetypes that you get in all cultures really is the great mother. Um, but looking back at this image now, I obviously see myself with this cardboard baby and I see this kind of desire to fulfill or inhabit um, this ideal image of motherhood is kind of creeping into my life as well as into my practice. Um, and around this time, Marina Warner's book, Alone of All Her Sex, um, which is a fantastic book about the Virgin Mary, if um, anybody who's interested in that and hasn't read it, I'd really recommend it. Um, that book was really important to me and I was making a lot of works that were about inhabiting that image of Mary. And um, they sort of led to me making this performance, Too Many Marys, where I put on all the Virgin Mary costumes that I had, which at this point is loads. Um, and the first time I made it, again, it was like before I realised I couldn't have children, and it was just this kind of like, oh, I've become this artist that dresses up as the Virgin Mary, I'll take it to its logical conclusion and put on all the costumes. But they become this kind of big, soft sculpture, kind of ridiculous sort of, um, caricature almost um, and then the second time I made the work uh, in 2019 and then the third time which was last year at Freeze Art Fair the weight of the um, costumes suddenly changed and it was like a physical burden that to me this idea of this woman who gets miraculously pregnant had become a burden on me. It's something that I think about a lot and so yeah the costumes pile up and up in it and the physical weight um, it's really analogous to that. And then the end of the performances, I sort of wrestle out of them all. Um, so I had this kind of increasing interest in goddess worship and also trying to use performance as a way to invoke, like playfully invoke a character or like what if I go to this space and try and like revivify something of this um, deity. So this performance was filmed at Edessa in northern Greece uh, where a goddess called Ma was venerated and um, so, yeah, kind of like thinking about performance as a way to activate a space, which in some ways I think uh, I've realised is maybe similar to like uh, the process of IVF. There's these gametes in the lab and they're like waiting to be transformed and like to come alive. So kind of thinking about um, performance in a sacred or pseudo sacred space as a way to kind of like energise that. And then... Um, ooh, the first work that I then made that was really kind of deliberately about what I was 
going through this this piece, Istra eats estradiol. And Istra is um, a pagan goddess associated with spring, and her name has been appropriated for Christian festival of Easter. She's shown with bunnies or hares and eggs, which obviously Easter has kind of cannibalized as well. And so an estradiol uh, was a medicine that I was taking uh, for IVF, it, like you, you take it to control your menstrual cycle. And so I was kind of imagining, like, what if these fertility goddesses, like, had to take the drugs because, you know, they didn't really, like, they couldn't do it without them. Um, so this is the first kind of deliberately autoethnographic work where I was like, I felt like not many people were making work about this stuff, which I now know isn't necessarily the case, but it's a very isolating experience and I kind of wanted to do something that was about maybe normalising the conversation around it. Um, this work was made between my first and second rounds of IVF and it was also made around the time that my mum died, so I guess like motherhood in all all my ways of relation to motherhood are kind of embedded in this piece of work. Um, so again, there's this sense of like performing as these characters, but also there's this ambivalence between a scientific approach and a faith-based approach, whether that's a kind of like canonical religion or whether it's something more folkloric. So the, um, the soundtrack is like a voiceover of folkloric advice and also uh, kind of incantatory readings from... Um, these documents you get given called IVF Injection Teach, which some people in the room might be familiar with, that um, yeah, tell you how to take the drugs. Um, I'm not screening this work today, but if every, anyone wants to see it, I can send you a link. Um, and then this hospital curtain back cloth um, is kind of a compositional device stolen from Renaissance mother and child paintings where there's often a kind of back cloth that's called a cloth of honour. Um, it's something I've used quite a lot. And yeah, this version's a hospital curtain. Uh, so then I made a series of live performances called Approaching Veriditas. And Veriditas is a concept um, associated with the medieval mystic and polymath Hildegard of Bingen, who's a character I'm really fascinated by, and it's this idea of this green and green life force within everything. And um, so I was sort of situating these works in these kind of um, gardens and greenhouses. This one's actually in a dried out well. Um, so these spaces where things should be flourishing, I suppose. Um, this costume uh, is based on a kind of Catholic pagan hybrid called the Madonna of the Wheat. She's like a sort of harvest Madonna. Um, and then this version at uh, Chiswick House and Gardens is like a very slow crawl towards a kind of big greenhouse with this um, bundle of synthetically dyed wheat. So I guess thinking quite a lot about what's natural and what's um, synthesized or kind of like amped up chemically. Um, so that was a series of live works, and then it culminated in this performance for camera approaching Veriditas epilogue, which uh, was made really as a sort of lament after I had all the rounds of IVF that I did um, didn't work. And um, really what I was trying to do is kind of a, try and develop a free associative language for something that's very difficult to talk about in normal language. Um, so there's lots of kind of iconography embedded in the costumes and everything, which I won't go into all of now, but just as an example, this hospital gown with the pelican pecking itself. It's an early Christian symbol called the pelican and its piety, where uh, they believed that the pelicans pecked themselves and fed the chicks with their blood, so it's this self-sacrificial image. But I'd seen this heraldic shield in a cathedral where the pelican's just pecking itself and it's got no young, which obviously I really related to and also this gesture felt like this gesture of injecting yourself in the stomach that I'd been doing a lot and um, so the um the work contains like all these kind of thwarted objects and characters so there's like an egg that won't crack and a breast that won't lactate and this mermaid who wants to do the splits um and it has uh readings of Hildegard of Bingen's kind of poem prayers um as this kind of voiceover, and they're all to do with like the Virgin Mary as this branch thick with leaves. So again, this image of kind of miraculous fecundity. Yeah, and there's also this improvised movement of this holding this absent infant. Um, 
this is a more recent work that actually isn't really expressly about these experiences so much, but I'm just including this one image here. Um, the work's called Enclosed Garden, which is like one of the names of the Virgin Mary is the Hortus Conclusus, or Enclosed Garden. And um, there's a kind of quite obscure medieval image of Mary where when the angel Gabriel arrives to tell her she's going to be pregnant, she is apparently spinning the thread to make the temple curtain. And um, my, there's lots of things in this video work that are performed kind of backwards or undone, but my protagonist, she's like unraveling and no angels appearing. And it's, it's this sense of like waiting for the miracle that never happens. Um, just going to race through a few paintings. <laughs> um, they're all painted with... Um, my mum was a painter, Rebecca Hind, and when she died, I cleared her studio and I kept a lot of her materials. They're all actually made with her materials. Um, and they have a lot of kind of leaking, bleeding, crying kind of qualities to them. And then, yeah, I'm just going to show this short video work, a song unheard. It's only been shown in a long... like a small online exhibition during the pandemic. It hasn't really been shown publicly before. Um, maybe I won't say too much about it. Maybe I'll just play it for you. Thank you.